Welcome to another Penn State College of Communications digital tutorial. Let's talk about another basic camera setting, what it means, and how to control it using our camera. What do we mean when we say white balance? What affects the colors we see in our photos, and what are some of the ways we can control those settings in the camera? White balance is, simply put, the adjustment we make so that colors look natural and accurate. Our white should look white, and if they do, then probably all the other colors in the scene will be accurate as well. At least that's the theory. Really, the key idea is that certain colors and objects are clear triggers for our brains. We know grass is green, and what a blue sky looks like, and what white should look like. We might not remember the exact paint color on the wall or the shade of that shirt, but if recognizable colors are wrong, we will know it. In life, our brain and eyes do an amazing job of adjusting to conditions. Outside, fluorescent lights, your bedside table, we make adjustments on the fly. If you're in a situation with different kinds of light and you pay attention, you'll be able to see the problem your camera faces every day. Walk by a lit up office building at dusk and the offices may look yellow or green. Our eyes and our cameras can't adjust to different light sources at the same time. Most of the time, our cameras can do a pretty good job of adjusting, if there is only one kind of light, and we will learn in future lessons how to adjust our photos in Photoshop. But there are some limits to what Photoshop can do, so it is important to understand how to get the best results possible in the camera. A quick note at this point. I am assuming we are shooting JPEGs. JPEGs are a file format for images that are nearly universal and common to almost every camera known to man or woman. It is the format we generally use when emailing photos or posting on a website or Instagram or Snapchat. JPEGs are ubiquitous. We will talk about the RAW file format in later lessons. RAW files, called NEFs in Nikon cameras, offer advantages and disadvantages. But for now, I suggest you shoot with your camera set to JPEG, as they are the simplest and most common format available. And now, a quick science lesson. How does color work? I imagine most of us have seen a rainbow, and maybe we understand that the natural white light of the sun is made up of a wide spectrum of colors. Maybe you learned the mnemonic Roy G. Biv as a child, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, to describe the colors of the rainbow. It was Isaac Newton using prisms who showed that the white light of the sun is made by combining these colors. The lamp in your house is also made up of a mix of colors, as is the fluorescent light in an office but it's a different mix, a different proportion of colors. And in the case of some fluorescent lights, some of the colors are even missing. If our camera is set to take the mix of colors in sunlight, but we are photographing with the light from a lamp, then our camera will misinterpret and misrepresent those colors. We have to change the settings so the camera can adjust for this different mix. One way to measure the color of light is using a scale called color temperature. Which is hotter, a blue flame or a yellow flame? Most of us learn somewhere along the way that blue flames are hotter. In fact, if you heat an object, you'll see it starts out glowing red, then yellow, then into the blues, and then we talk about white hot as the hottest. These different temperatures and colors have been idealized into a color temperature scale using degrees Kelvin. You can see on the scale where standard kinds of colors fit, a candle, for example, or an indoor lamp, or sunlight, or shade. We don't need to memorize this information, but it's worth understanding it. Our lamps in our houses tend towards the very warm yellows and oranges of low color temperatures. The midday sun is in the middle range. The light in the shadow of a tree or house is in the bluer, higher color temperature range. Confusingly, again, why is it that so many photographic measurements seem to be in reverse? Confusingly, we talk about warm colors to mean reds and yellows, but these are low color temperatures while cool colors, tend towards the blue, are higher color temperatures. It's because in one case, we are talking about the feelings of colors as warm or cool, how they affect our emotions, how they uh, affect us aesthetically. In the other, we are talking about the actual color temperature using degrees Kelvin. There are several options for setting color temperature on our cameras, so let's look at them. We have auto white balance. We have some built-in presets and then we have the ability to set a custom preset. Let's start with auto white balance, and here's the good news. 90% of the time, auto white balance will do a very good job. Especially outdoors, but even indoors, it will usually adjust your camera automatically and get you pretty close to a natural look. 
For starters this semester, I would encourage you to use the AWB auto white balance setting. It'll just be one less thing to worry about as you try to master all the controls of the camera. So we could stop right there, right? But there will be times when you'll want to use a different setting, and how will you know? You'll know because you can look on the back of your camera. We live in a wonderful time. You can look at your photos as you start to shoot an assignment or situation. If the colors look wrong, if they have a strong yellow-orange cast, or they're too blue or green or purple or, or whatever color, move on to option two or three. What kind of situations might confuse the auto white balance setting? One will be mixed light. If a scene has more than one kind of light, say for example you're indoors but there's also a window with window light, the camera can easily get fooled. And the reality is that your camera can only adjust to one kind of light at a time. So if a scene is lit by different kinds of light, you'll have to choose. Is it more important that the window light looks accurate or, or the room lights? And that will depend on the subject matter and the camera might get that wrong. Another situation is we might not want the camera to make colors look natural. Here is the most common example of that. Think about sunsets. Why are they so pretty? It's the colors. The pinks, the reds, the oranges, all those streaks of color in the sky add to its beauty. But our camera doesn't know beauty. Our camera doesn't really know it's a sunset. Our camera won't understand that we want to keep those colors. If we shoot in the auto mode, our camera will assume it's daylight and try to neutralize all those pretty colors. We often end up with a, with a sunset that just doesn't have that glow, that beauty, and many times we wonder why, and it's often because we've shot in the auto mode and the camera has, in essence, sucked all the color out of the scene. These are the situations where the built-in presets can help. If you set your camera to daylight, your camera is assuming that it's midday, but it's not, and so the colors will shift but we want them to shift towards the reds and oranges and yellows of late afternoon. There are nine white balance options on the D7200. Auto, which we've just talked about, and then a series of presets. Incandescent, which is for the standard light bulb. Fluorescent, which can be a range of colors, but is for fluorescent bulbs. Daylight, specifically set for sort of midday sunshine. Flash, for when you're using an electronic flash, either on your camera or perhaps in a photo studio. Cloudy, light from a cloudy or overcast day. Shady, light in the shade. And then degrees Kelvin, where you can set an exact specific color temperature based on degrees Kelvin. And finally, preset, which is the ability to customize and set a white balance. As I said earlier, the auto setting will work 90%, maybe more, but at least 90% of the time. If you're checking your photos and colors look natural, then you're all set and you don't have to worry about anything else. But if you need to change a setting, simply press and hold the white balance button, the WB button on the back of the camera, and use the back command dial to switch between options, moving from auto to incandescent to daylight and so on. The front command dial will let you make small changes to individual settings. If you think the incandescent setting is best, for example, but not quite right, you could use the front command dial to slightly warm or slightly cool the color. As a beginner, I would keep it simple. Don't spend too much time on the front command dial. The various presets can be useful, especially in mixed settings where you want to tell the camera to prioritize. If the light is a mixture of daylight through a window and lamplight, and your subject is primarily lit by the window, for example, you may want to tell the camera to use the daylight setting. In a very unusual setting, uh, a setting where none of the presets seem quite right, you might be in a stadium or, or street lights outside or any kind of unusual lighting situation or any time when it's very important that you're very precise with your colors, you can set a custom white by telling the camera what white should be. You'll need something white or gray. It needs to be neutral because you'll be measuring the light of the scene reflected off your white or gray card or piece of paper. You don't want anything with a color cast to it. A pinkish white will entirely throw off this process. To set a preset white, first set your exposure for the scene. You need to have a proper exposure setting, so take a couple of pictures and get the exposure set properly. You need to have a white or light gray card. You can buy cards specifically for this purpose, but a white piece of paper, a white t-shirt, a gray t-shirt, all of those will work fine. 
It's important that the paper or, or whatever you're using is in the light of the scene. Don't cast a shadow on it. Have it oriented to reflect the light of the space. If it's angled down and picking up the reflection of, say, the grass, and that's not the main light that's hitting your subject, then the white balance won't be set properly. On the D7200, go to the preset mode under white balance by holding the WB button and turning the back command dial. Now, let go of the WB button and immediately press and hold it again. The PRE symbol should start flashing. While it's still flashing and you have a couple of seconds, take a picture of your white or gray card. You need to zoom in and lean in so the screen is filled by the card. You don't want anything on the edges. It doesn't matter if it is in focus or not. If it worked properly, good will flash on the screen on the top of the camera. If it flashes no good, try again. It probably means your exposure was incorrect. When it works, when you see good, your camera is now set to that lighting condition. You should be able to shoot in those conditions and get a very accurate white balance so that your images have a proper color. Remember, if the light changes, if you move to a different room, you'll need to reset your white balance, either go back to auto or do a new custom setting. Hopefully this gives you a clear understanding of how to set white balance and why it's important. A quick review. White balance is setting your camera to properly capture the colors of a scene so they look natural and accurate. Most of the time we can simply use the auto setting on the camera. It does a very good job. In mixed lighting or unusual light, we might choose to select one of the camera presets, incandescent, daylight, shade, etc. Or we can set a camera setting by using a white or gray card and use the preset function on the camera. The more accurately we record our scene using a proper white balance and a proper exposure, the better the final image quality of our final photo. And once we have a clear understanding of these basic technical skills, we can really spend our mental energy thinking about how to make interesting, compelling, evocative, provocative photographs.